Well, the president in Wisconsin today is speaking at this hour on the economy and the governor of that state, Scott Walker, Republican, who is expected to announce his White House bid just days from now, did something some Democrats don't even do. He actually greeted the president. Uh, but Governor uh, Walker is making it clear that the bright spots in Wisconsin economy are because of state level, not federal efforts. In fact, he wrote an op-ed today, and here's just a snippet of that. Quote, to be sure, Wisconsin's economy has enjoyed a dramatic recovery over the last few years, but our fortunes have improved in spite of, not because of, the president's big government policies. Reforming our bloated federal government is essential to revitalizing our nation's economy. And I, I like to think what we have been doing in Wisconsin could serve as a model. Joining us now to talk more about this, Bernard Whitman, former Bill Clinton pollster and CEO of Whitman Insight Strategies, and Guy Benson, Fox News contributor and political editor, editor of townhall.com. we got a lot of fun topics to get to. We're going to start with this one. Guy, everyone was looking at this moment on the tarmac. Is it going to be a Jan Brewer moment, a Rick Perry moment? moment, a Chris Christie moment. Was it any sort of a moment between Scott Walker and the president? No, it was just a relatively cordial, polite moment, which is not surprising at all. Scott Walker is a statesman. You might remember, Jenna, last year when Scott Walker was up for re-re-election, he's won three elections in four years there, the president came to his state in the middle of that fight. Uh, Scott Walker's Democratic opponent was nowhere to be found. She wanted nothing to do with President Obama, but there was Walker there to greet the president. He did it again today. It's the right thing to do and good for him. Bernard, I'm curious your thoughts on this as someone that's uh, worked on campaigns. What do you make of the president deciding, well, of all the states out there, I'm going to go to Wisconsin to talk about the economy. Is that just because of the economy of Wisconsin, or is it because Scott Walker is thinking about the White House and maybe it would be a good political move to just be there? Well, I think it makes perfect sense for him to go to Wisconsin. It's a major state, uh, and it's been fundamental to the growth of the economy overall. You know, I think that it's no surprise Scott Walker is looking to the voters of Iowa because the voters back home in Wisconsin actually don't like him very much. We actually disagree, I think, with most of the things he raised in the op-ed. Fifty-six percent of Wisconsin voters actually disapprove of Scott Walker's performance. Fifty-three percent think the state's headed in the wrong direction under his leadership. And three-quarters actually oppose his proposals to slash education funding. So I think he's probably looking for a nice exit strategy uh, mm. out of uh, Wisconsin and, and hopeful that uh, neighboring Iowa will deliver that for him. Guy, what do you think about that argument? Yeah, the voters have had their say three times in four years, with the second one being because the Democrats raised a very expensive and quixotic recall attempt. And every single time Scott Walker beat them, the state is up with jobs, uh, unemployment down. He's doing a terrific job there, and they've had opportunities to voice their pleasure or displeasure, and he's still the governor for a reason. Interesting. It was, Wisconsin's a hot spot, by the way, because Senator Bernie Sanders was there, and his presidential campaign seems to be picking up a little steam, at least if you look at his rally last night in Wisconsin, in Madison, Wisconsin, I should mention. He attracted nearly 10,000 people. This is he's making headway in some polls in Iowa and New Hampshire, New Hampshire, which, of course, hold the first presidential nominating contest. Bernard, what about, what about Bernie Sanders? We take a look at the polls. We've been mentioning this Queen of Piac poll. Hillary Clinton is still far ahead, but she's dropped 26 points in the last several weeks. Do you think Bernie Sanders is telling us something about an opening here, perhaps, for another candidate uh, for the Democratic nomination for president. No, I mean, I think good for Bernie. Look, I like his name, and I think that he adds to the, <laughs> I think he adds to the debate. I think he adds to the conversation. I think Hillary Clinton welcomes that, welcomes the participation of those who might want to challenge her for the nomination because it's make her a stronger candidate. But the facts are, his appeal is actually quite limited. His experience is limited. His views are very much to the far left of the party. Uh, his standing certainly has improved somewhat, uh, but it trails uh, uh, Hillary Clinton by um, 30 points or so. Uh, and it, if you look among different constituencies, women, people of color, uh, Bernie Sanders' appeal really is quite limited. He, he is you know, uh, popular among uh, far left white guys. You know, I should have disqualified you with the name Bernie. I should have just automatically, I, should, I apologize to our viewers. You know, it's unfair, unfair bias. Guy, let me ask you this question about Bernie Sanders. Okay, so he's been, he's really gathered the biggest crowd that we've seen from any, can, you know, presidential candidate, Republican or Democrat. What can conservatives learn from Bernie Sanders? Is there a lesson in here for, for conservatives? Yeah, first of all, I agree with you. Bernard should have recused yes, himself exactly. in this entire answer. <laughs> and you're not uh, going to be able to talk about any presidential candidate's name, Guy. I'm sorry. That, that's, hey, I, that's fine by me. Look, uh, Bernie Sanders, crowd size is not necessarily an indication of someone's actual support, although you're right, you know, the polling is moving up for him and, you know, he's improving. I think that's underscoring more than anything 
the weakness of Hillary Clinton and how there are a lot of people within her party who are looking for really anyone but her, even if it's a sort of disheveled socialist like Bernie Sanders, who represents some really failed ideas. But I'll say this about Bernie Sanders in his defense, it, honestly. He is earnest in his beliefs, and he is honest about who he is and what he mm. thinks. And I think those are traits lacking in Mrs. Clinton, and I think it's part of the reason that we've seen some traction for him. And maybe perhaps something that Republican candidates should pay attention to. Okay, I'm glad we're going to be able to fit in this story because it's a very serious one. Uh, yeah. Probably the biggest social network story of the last 24, 48 hours. President Obama and the GOP presidential candidate Jeb Bush, they're coming out on the same side of the great guacamole debate. If our viewers don't know, what happened? This is <laughs> the New York Times came out and decided to say a recipe that included peas in guac was a good idea. And people were furious about this guy and Bernard. I mean, so upset. Jeb Bush comes out and tweets about it. You got the president tweeting about how this is a bad idea. Bernard, who knew? Peas and guacamole? Really? You know what? I'm glad that we're finally bringing uh, the Republicans and Democrats together. I, for one, <laughs> celebrated Pride Weekend and the legalization of same-sex marriage by having a giant bowl of guacamole at my favorite Mexican restaurant in New York City, Dos Caminos. Uh, and so I applaud <laughs> actually Republicans and Democrats coming together to fight you, against I mean, peas do you support, and guacamole. You fight against the peas and guacamole. Just leave this up for a second. This, can you go back to that? It was a, the tweet that was sent out by the New York Times that started it all. And it says, add green peas to your guacamole. Trust us. Guys, someone responded to that and said, I'll never trust you ever again, New York <laughs> Times, because of that. Do you, I mean, is, th this is a big issue, Guy. Yes, shame on the New York Times. This is an abomination. <laughs> <laughs> it's not natural, and I can't help but wonder, would this even exist if not for Obamacare? Once again. Oh I mean, he just found a way to bring it back to health care. The president says he's not for it, though, Guy. I'm sorry. He already said he likes traditional guacamole. All right. No well, peace. I'm with him on that one. Okay. All right, there good we, for him. And know, to be clear, I don't engage in name politics because I am 100% behind Hillary Clinton. Sorry, Bernie. Okay, there you go. Well, we can all get together with the guacamole. It's nice, uh, nice to have you guys here. We'll end on a positive note. Guy, Bernard, happy July 4th. Great Thanks, to have Jenna. you guys. Happy 4th, Jenna. All right. The